Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. By continuing with the collection framework, in this video we will see what is tree set and how it is different from other set implementation hash set. We will also see the data structure used to store the data and some functions which are only available to tree set in the collection framework. Tree set is a class in Java collection framework which implements the set and navigable set interface. It also inherits abstract set class as well. It only contains unique elements. The data access and retrieval in case of tree set is very fast compared to the other data structures. It does not allow null element to be entered to the tree set object. Also, it is a non-synchronized. So we have been discussing about this non-synchronized behavior for almost all the collection element that we have discussed as of now. But similar to the other ones, this can also be made synchronized. That is, it can be used in the multi-threaded environment by making use of collections class. So collections is a utility class available, which is having a synchronized set method, which will return a synchronized tree set here. It maintains ascending order of the element. It uses self-balancing binary search tree for storing the element. Now let's see very briefly what is a self-balancing binary search tree. It provides an efficient implementation for mutable ordered lists and can be used for other abstract data structures such as sets in this case. To be specific, tree set is using a red-black tree. It is a kind of self-balancing binary search tree where each node stores an extra bit to represent the color which is used to ensure that the tree remains balanced during the insertion or deletion. The main benefit of using this self-balancing binary search tree is its time complexity. The time complexity for searching, inserting and deletion is of order of log n, which is very efficient. So here in this image, you can see a balanced binary search tree where the root element is there and whatever child element that will be inserted here, uh, on the left hand side, the child element will be less than the root element and on the right hand side, the child element will be greater than the root element. Similar approach will be followed uh, in the um, respective child as well. So suppose here we have 30 and on the left hand side child will be less than 30 which is 22 and on the right hand side child will be more than 30 which is 40. So this is how the data is stored in self-balancing binary search tree. Now let's see different types of constructors supported in tree set. The first one is the default constructor, which is tree set. It will create an empty tree set uh, that will be sorted in ascending order according to the natural order. So that means if we are storing numbers, then automatically it will take the ascending order in the natural form, like one, two, three, four. Second one is, uh, which is expecting one argument, which is of type collection. So what it will do, it will create a tree set that contains element of that collection, which is being passed in the argument. Third one is uh, expecting a comparator as an argument. So in this case, it will be an empty tree set, but its uh, order will be defined based on the comparator that is being passed as an argument. The last one is expecting a sorted set as an argument. So in this case, a tree set that contains the element of that passed sorted set will be created. Let's see a few methods of tree set which are not common in other collection framework implementations. The first one is ceiling. So it returns the equal or closest greatest element of the specified element from the set or null if there is no such element. So we will uh, see all these methods which we will be discussing here in action as well after we discuss it. The next one is floor. So just uh, on the other side of uh, the provided element. So it will return equal or closest to the least element of specified element in the set. The next one is iterator. So this will return a descending iterator. So that means it is used to iterate the element in descending order itself. If we try to add a normal iterator, that will be in ascending order. But if we explicitly want the descending order iterator, we can make use of this method descending iterator. Next one is navigable set. So this will uh, descending set. So this will return a navigable set in the reverse order. Next one is higher. It returns the closest greatest element, whatever we are trying to search. So whatever element is there on the higher side as the first one that will be returned in this case, uh, similar to the ceiling and floor. So in addition to higher also, we also have lower. So that will return the closest least element of the specified element in the set. Then we have 
poll first. So suppose if we want to uh, retrieve the lowest element available in tree set and want to remove it after retrieving, we can make use of poll first methods. So similar to that, we have poll last. So that means if we want to remove the highest element after retrieving it, so that can be done using poll last. So what if the requirement is not to remove the element just to retrieve it? So for that, we have first method that will return the lowest element and the last method that will return the highest element available in the sorted set. Now let's see those functions in action also. So in my tree set demo class, I have declared one tree set which can contain strings and I have added five different elements H, B, D, A and Z. And as we know that uh, tree set will store these elements in the ascending order by defaults. So I'm just printing the tree set here. Let's see the output so it will be more clear. So here you can see I have added H first after that B then D but if you can see the tree set has stored the element in ascending order from A to Z. It is A then B then D after that H and Z. Now let's see the examples of those methods which we have discussed. So the first method which I will be discussing is ceiling. Ceiling is nothing but it will give you whatever is the next item available. So here I am passing E so it will look inside the tree set and will see if any element which is coming after E is present in the set. So here you can see E F G H. So we are expecting H to be printed here. So let's execute it once. So here you can see ceiling element for E is H. The second similar method was floor. So floor is nothing but uh, in the opposite direction as of ceiling. So for F if I want to see what is the floor value. So it will start looking on the left side. That means whatever uh, character is there which is less than F. So if we see D is there. So the output for tset.floor F should be D. Let's execute the program. So here you can see the floor element for F is D. Similarly, we had two more methods which are almost similar to these two, higher and lower. So in this case, we are trying to fetch higher of B. So it will check whatever component is available in this tree set which is higher than B. So I am expecting again uh, D should be printed here. And for the lower side, A should be printed because A comes before B. Let's try to run the program and see the output. So higher of B is D and lower of B is A. So there will be a question in your mind that then what is the difference between higher and ceiling. So the difference is ceiling will give you an equal to as well. So suppose if we pass B here and if we try to find the ceiling of B, it will not give us D, it will give us B. So it will check if the element uh, is equal to is present there then it will return that otherwise the higher value. So let's execute this program. So here you can see the ceiling of B is B but the higher element of to B is D. So this is the main difference between higher and ceiling. Now before discussing the iterators or the descending set let's see uh, four more methods which we have discussed in our slides. The first two are uh, tree set dot first and other one was tree set dot last. So this methods will return the first element or the smallest element present in the tree set and dot last will return the highest element present in the tree set. So let's execute it. So I am expecting the lowest element is A. So the first one should be A and the last one should be Z. Let's execute it. So here you can see the first one is A and the last one is Z. The standard iterator we already know in the collection framework. So let's try to add a descending iterator. So the iterator it should contain string type of value. So how we can uh, assign an iterator to this it reference so for that that is tree set dot descending iterator. So it will return the set uh, it will return an iterator using which we can traverse the tree set in reverse order. So let's try to do that it dot has next. So accessing ways those will remain same that we have for the iterator. So system dot out dot print ln it dot next okay so after that let me just add a space okay uh, let's try to print it in a single line so i'll remove i'll replace the print ln with print only so in this particular statement we are expecting the uh, output as starting from z then h d b and a let's execute the program 
so here you can see the output of the tree uh, is in reverse because we have obtained an iterator which is descending iterator now the last method that we have discussed was returning a navigable set so let's try to create an object of navigable set which should contain strings and name it as nav set so how we can get it tree set dot descending set so this specific function will return a navigable set but in descending order so here again let's try to print it to see whether this uh, navigable set is having uh, all the elements in reverse order so let's execute it so here you can see the whole elements are reversed in order starting with z and ending with a before we end this video uh, i have missed a couple of functions uh, the first one is poll first so this method is uh, almost similar to dot first but there is some additional operation so it what it will do it will retrieve the first element but it will remove that first element as well after the retrieval so here at line number 33 first we are doing tree set dot poll first so it should return the first element which is a and after that we are printing the tree set here so we should be able to see that a has been uh, removed from the tree set itself let's execute it so here you can see a is printed because we have called tree set dot poll first and after the poll first we can see a is removed from the tree set now the set is starting with b d z h and z so similarly we have a uh, poll last as well let's try to perform the same operation using poll last and after that printing the tree set again so after this a is already removed from the tree set so i'm expecting z should also be removed and we should get the final tree set output as b d h and z in the beginning because we are calling tree set dot poll last so let's save and execute the program and here you can see z is returned uh, for tree set dot poll last because that is the last element and after that tree set only contains b d and h other than that we have almost all other methods which were available in collection framework like adding add all clone clear comparator contains so all those methods are available so if you want to try out these methods you can try it out because ide will help you in identifying which method is there and even also they can ide will provide you the detailed uh, description of the method as well what that specific method do so that's it for this video thanks for watching see you next time